today we're going to be checking out some Jesse Lee Peterson. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section. And let me know what you guys think about this video and subject here in the comments, okay? With that said, let's get into this one. You are a diversity, equity, and inclusion leader. Can you explain to me what is that and how does that work? Yeah, so that means that, again, my focus, my, my learning laboratory is the workplace. So I roll into organizations and I ensure that black people, that people of color, that women, that gender minorities, that sexual minorities, that people with disabilities are being treated respectfully and appropriately and fairly within the context of the workplace. Protected categories are protected for a reason. And a lot of people are, you know, when people are actually keen on hiring folks from the demographics because that's the first hurdle a lot of organizations don't have any of these folks represented if they actually do hire folks from from underrepresented demographics um they'll, they'll a lot of people will hire and then tokenize hire and then tell them to go sit down and shut up we got you for the picture on the annual report we got you for the picture on the website now don't contribute and those microaggressions are not at all insignificant like people are are, are you know making stereotypes and talking about how people talk how people dress making you know making racial implications and comments things that are inappropriate in the world much less the workplace so my job is to go in and i quantify like i do metrics and my company is the only company that can actually quantify diversity equity and inclusion and then create a metrics based um, accountability system for making sure that we close the gap because black people and companies all across this country and all around the world are often having a very different experience from white people in companies. And even if you just look at the organizational chart, you often have the most diversity at the bottom of the pyramid and the higher up you go, the more white and the more male the organization becomes. That's not always happening on purpose, but that fact limits the ability of black men and women and Hispanic men and women and queer men and women to have the opportunity to be successful, to thrive, to feed their families and to live into their best lives. So uh, but the way she was going, I know it was only a matter of time before she mentioned the white people. <laughs> you know, we can't get away from that no matter what's going on. I understand and I see where she's coming from with certain things. But also, she has to realize, too, that it's obviously going to have more whites dominating certain companies at that certain level. Most of the population, right? So, that's common sense. And handicap, disabilities, stuff like that, <laughs> that's different. Some people can't help that. But you know what you can't help? Being a hard-working black man that's not handicapped, that has no disability, and maybe just lazy. There's a difference between those things. And I'm going to get into that. Let's continue. So my job is to knock down those barriers and make sure that people are having an equitable experience. Amazing. <laughs> I um, I know truckloads of businessmen and women, but mostly men around the country, that they don't want to hire black people. Foreigners who have come here as well, they don't like hiring black people because the blacks are so much trouble. They are always complaining. They show up late. They think that everything is racism. Anytime you have to correct them. And so a lot of companies don't like hiring the blacks. And when they, when they, get, they also are concerned that when they let them go, they're going to be sued for being called racist, right? Because the blacks think everything is racist. And so they are trying to avoid hiring black people. So if you don't correct the blacks, why would anybody want to be bothered with them? That is also another factor. I was a manager. A lot of you guys probably know because I said it in my older videos. I was a manager for years. But before I became a manager, I was the only black young man working overnight. Every other black man that came after me, fired, lazy, no call, no show. After their second day on the job, they're calling out sick. Keep in mind, I was the only black guy on that shift for almost 11 years until I got promoted and just when I left. Can you imagine guys, 11 years. And we probably went through about, i say about 20 young black men, 20 that couldn't even last a month 
Now, what does that tell you? So ascribing those particular uh, attributes to black people only is super problematic because you get people of all races in organizations who complain, who show up late, who don't do their job, who sue you when you mistreat them. So those are not characteristics of black people. But it's, what most, you're, what it's, it's well and alive in the black folks, though. Well, it is well and alive in all folks. That yeah. is well and alive in all folks. Listen, I'm an organizational development specialist. I, have a do I don't care what you organize a specialist into, lady. Listen to what he's telling you. Yes, a lot of people do that. But one particular group of people that put race into every... You guys see it now in these days and time. Everything is racist. Ma'am, that's the difference. He's right when he's talking about Yes, everybody wants sugar, they get mistreated, or they feel like they've, they've been discriminated because they race or how they look or how they dress. Yeah, we know how that goes. But if you're lazy, you showing up late, no call, no shows, how you want to sue? Because not, that, now you turn into a whole race thing. No company wants to deal with that headache. And I understand what Jesse's talking about. Like I said, I had multiple of them. I had this one black guy. Came in. I know his girlfriend. So she was like, hey, Kendall. And she's white. She was like, hey, Kendall, my boyfriend in the job. You know, we have a, we have a four-year-old daughter. Can you hook him up? Pull some strings? I was like, all right, I got you. I did all of that. Right, guys? Keep in mind, he has no job. She's working two jobs. Two. So I was like, all right. Got him in. Guys, <laughs> the fourth day on the job, he already calling out. Came back. He worked one night, guys. Then he missed three more nights. No call, no show. So I'm like, I, I called this girl from my head. Yo, he's not showing up to work. He told her that he was off. And he was 28 years old. Yes, there's lazy people. Yes, we know that. In every race, there's lazy people. But where I work, and when I moved from one store to the next, it was the same thing. It's sad. It, no, it really is sad. Because even when I went to the other store, and it's a predominantly black neighborhood it's the same thing nobody wants to i have one guy coming to work with an anchor monitor talking about he want to change his life around but can't show up to work on time he coming into work two hours late so wh wh what are we supposed to do with that there's a difference and you know she won't admit she's gonna be biased doctorate of management and organizational development i'm in organizations all over the world and i can tell you that statistically speaking all over the world those are management issues that show up in all races in all genders and in all sexual orientations they show up across the board and what you're describing is your what you're describing is the conscious bias of ostensibly white people you're talking about who don't know how to communicate with, lead, manage, or interact with black people across differences and inspire the kind of behavior that they're looking for. You've got to actually create a culture of intention and decide how you want people to feel and experience their day-to-day -day work life. And if you can't create that sense of belonging, that sense of engagement, that sense of inspiration, then you are every bit as much culpable for how people are showing up in the workplace. Man, but I was a black manager. I haven't talked to the young man because I told him, hey man, I understand, I'm gonna give you another chance. I'm a father, I have two kids. I haven't missed one day of work in the first six years. I didn't miss one day. I was like, yeah, I understand you're going through your struggles. You know, you want to be there for your kid. You want to pay your child support. I got you, but you have to show up on time. I'll give you the hours, whatever you need for me to help you. I will do my part, but I need you now to show up. Otherwise, one more time, man, I got to let you go. So you can't say a brother's not looking out for you. Guess what happened, guys? Two days later, he did the same thing again. So I have to let him go. So it, uh, you can't baby grown men. You coming to do a job, you getting paid to do that job. What, what is she talking about? Like pat them on the head, cuddle them. <laughs> what is she? Lady, come on now. We got to be more realistic than this. Why is it in the black community there's so much robbing going on? Stealing, house invasion. Huh? Because they're lazy. It's all right to say it. But why not train the blacks how to act 
rather you can't, than that's putting, it. What you're saying right now is illegal. Rather that's than illegal. putting, rather than putting the responsibility on the owner of the company. No, that's, that's what, what you just said is illegal. Why is you that? You cannot train the blacks. Why not? That's not you have. It, what if you are offering training? You have to train everyone. You can't make assignments by race like that. There are, that there are there there are laws that protect against isolating groups for for purposes like that. You can't do that's like you can't just hire people. You can't hire people because of their race, because of their gender. Well, no, I'm not talking about the company training them. Why don't mm -hmm. you your job? Want you switch your role rather than putting that responsibility on the companies? Why not train the blacks how to work? how to act at work that is that is an absurd notion oh it's, why it's hard to train them i love that ending <laughs> yeah 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 she would look at it look at her face yeah because you know it's the truth it is complicated man some of you can't get to them they're so used to a certain lifestyle i remember in high school some blacks used to make fun of other blacks when they when they hear them talking about they want to be a doctor lawyer electrician um construction worker they will laugh at them they really ain't they mind and she has to put that in account too that the lifestyle the culture because a lot of them thinking it is it's cool to be up on the corner on the street selling weed selling illegal stuff Yes, a lot of them are programmed into their culture. That's the majority of what the music pushes. Am I right or wrong? I encountered over 15 young black men that I myself had to personally let them go. Yes, I had problems with white, with um, white workers and Spanish workers. But for me to be the only black guy on that shift for that many years goes to show you the problem. I had this one black guy who came up to me and he was like, hey, Kendall, yeah, I, I know I just started like a week ago and I'm going through a lot of stuff at home. He said, you are, you are a black man, right? You can understand. You can understand where I'm coming from, right? It, it's hard out here for a black man. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? It's hard out here for a black man. I'm a black man. I don't make excuses up. I separate real life from my work. I have a responsibility. I have a paycheck to earn. He was like, yo, why, why, you, why you disrespecting and trying to talk down to me? I'm like, I'm not talking down to you. It's called responsibility, my man. You and your, you 31. When you going to be responsible, dude? You said you have no job. You have four, he has four kids. As he's paying child support for. Like, when you going to grow up? Some, some of them do look down on you. If you're doing a certain type of job, they try to look down on you. Meanwhile, they have no job. You got to be qualified to do the job. This can't hire anybody to do a job. They have to be willing to go through the training. You don't so much you could train an individual. Then it's up to them to apply that training to themselves to do the job. You saw her face there when Jesse said that. Why you got to leave it up to the company? Enough for the company to mold you. You have to be willing and driven to work. I had to work hard to be conscious to get that bigger paycheck. It goes for everybody, man. But you got to want to work hard for it. Jesse is right. Some individuals <laughs> are very hard to work with, man. It, it's not easy. And it's funny how they always make excuses up. They always try to baby um, people in the black community. You have to be, you have to put your foot down. It's definitely a culture thing. They don't want to work. I'm seeing young kids flexing guns. They're thinking that is cool. That's what I was telling you guys. They think a certain lifestyle is cool. It's cool. To have the nicest clothes and sneakers. But not work hard for it though. Probably rob, sell illegal stuff. Yeah, to, to get that money. Not a career. No, not a career. But I'd love to hear you guys' opinion about this in the comments. It goes to show you that no matter what, they always put the white man on the topic of discussion. They can never just focus on the black community. Just to round it off for you guys, I have a, I have a few black friends. Yes, a good bit of them. But um, some of them that I really honestly thought that their life would have been in prison, they change. Their parents. That's what I'm saying. You need a strong foundation and a strong backbone. Because his parents make sure they stuck on him, push them. Now he has his own company. He's a manager. He's the manager of his own company. He run things. They call him. He's married now. 
got four kids. I believe he just had a newborn child. So it is there. But you have to have that strong backbone to push you to want to do better in life. Because even he said it when I talked to him a while ago. He said, yo, man, I honestly taught out a bit of jail. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm happy. I'm here with my kids and I'm married now. And I'm happy for him. And I've known him ever since he was like 12 years old. Now he's 38. So he goes to show you, man, nothing is impossible. But you have to have the drive to want to do better for yourself. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section. And let me know what you guys think about this video here in the comments. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. You guys have a blessed day.